Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to look at permutations with repetition. So this is chapter 11. Yeah. And the first question starts off with, imagine that the letters of the word book are written on tiles. And what we want to do is we want to rearrange these tiles as many different ways that we can. So I'll start off and basically, since there are two different, well, since there are two letter O's, I'll make them look different by writing O sub one, O sub two, so we know which ones we're using. Otherwise, we can't keep track of what we're doing. So that's my first arrangement. Then I can swap the O's with each other, and I still have the word book, right? And then, so I'm gonna stick with B in the first one, and then I'm gonna try to rearrange these as many different ways as possible. How many different ways can I rearrange these three letters? Any ideas? Yeah. Three different ways. Nine, six. Nine, six nine, different six, ways. Six. Okay, so that's like a three factorial, right? Because I can swap the spots. Now, that means I'm gonna have three different, or sorry, six different words that start with a B and rearrange them. And over here, if I want, I can start my letters, I can start it with O, the first O, so I'm going to have six different ways to do that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I can start off with the O2. Okay, and then Six. And then my last one, I'm going to have them start with K, four, five, six. So I'm going to hit pause. I'm going to write down all the different combinations, and then we'll continue, okay? Okay. And we're back. So we're back, and that took a little while, right? We had to keep it organized, but I think we have them all down. There are 24 different ways that we were able to rearrange this. And what did we notice as we were going through these uh, with, uh, well, the first two here? Essentially, these are Double. the same word, right? Yeah. And same thing for this guy and that guy. That guy? And so, how many how many different letters are rearranged? Four, three, four letters are four. So there's two. So there's four letters in total, but then we have a double O here, right? Which one? Where? Kube. Did I miss one here? Right there. Right there. Right here? No, below. This one. Yeah, you already have Kobo. Like Kobo, where? Oh, I've got that here? Yeah. And here? Yeah, so what should this one be? Kobo. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay, O1. So swap the O1. Oh, so see, that's pretty tough, right? It took me such a long time to actually write it out, and then I happened to mess it up just because there's a lot to keep track of and a lot to rearrange. So even though we got that there's a total of 24 different possibilities here, I still managed to mess it up. Now, what if the words were longer? And what if there were more things that repeated? How easy would this be to do? It is probably an easier way to figure out how many that we could do, right? All right, so the whole idea is that these words have repeating letters. Okay, and what we could do is we could eliminate kind of the doubles. All right, so um, we, we're noticing that Kobo is the same as Kobo, right? So over here, and we can look at the fact that we've got four factorial permutations of the tiles. The two O's means that there are two non-distinct versions of each permutation. And by non-distinct, it means that they repeat. So how many distinct permutations do we actually have? Well, it's four factorial divided by two factorial. So then there is really only 
12 distinct items. So what we did here is we divided out what is repeating. So in general, so basically what we have is we've got four factorial different letters, right? And then how many of those letters are repeating? I've got two out of the four letters are repeating, which are the double O's. So then that's what that's what gives me. Four factorial divided just by two is supposed to it has to be two factorial in case they're like what if it was three letters that repeated then I'd have to divide out the three factorial okay so it just works out for this example because it's simpler it's just for consistency so in general if a set of n objects has a set of a objects that are identical and that need to be arranged you have n factorial over a factorial okay so it's the number of objects the number of objects divided by the number the objects that are repeating so the number of repeats and it's possible to have more than one item repeating and when that happens you're going to multiply the factorials together Okay, and then you're basically dividing out all of the repeats. Okay, so let's have a look at a couple of more examples to help out with this. Okay, so we've got the word Manitoba. And the first thing that you need to identify, so it says different arrangements. When it's referring to different arrangements, this A and this A are the same thing. Yes. So we have this repeating, so we're going to divide out a two factorial. So the A's repeat. How many letters do we have in total? Eight. So we've got eight factorial different ways that we can arrange them. And then I want to divide out my A's. Two. So that's my two factorial. So that's going to be 20160. Different ways to Whoa. arrange the letters. That's almost the that we are in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, <laughs> how many different arrangements of all of the numbers of 81818 can you make? Well, first, how many how many digits do I have in total? Have I have five in total. And then how many eights do I have? So the eights is going to give me a three factorial. And the ones are going to give me a two factorial. Yeah, so now I, I put them in separately in the denominator. Okay? Now if I wanted to do this with a calculator, uh, without a calculator, sorry, what I could do is I could break up this factorial so that it's 5 times 4 times 3 factorial and then notice I have a 3 factorial in the denominator so that can cancel out and now I've got 5 times 4 over 2 factorial now 2 factorial is just 2, right? okay, so I can reduce this to a 2 and I end up with 5 times 2, which is 10. So there's 10 different ways that I can arrange that. So let me just put in a note here. That's because of the 3 eighths, and this is because of the 2 ones. Okay? <clears throat> that all right? Okay. Now let's have a look at this here. Here we're looking at different paths. So what it's talking about from A to B. Now this B should have printed right there. So I've got, I'm going to have to go from A all the way to B. And what I can do is I'm allowed to go up or right so I can go like this I can go up one and then write five and then up two more 
or I can go up two and then right and then up and then right again or I can go so I'm looking at all the different paths that I can go right so I can only move up one or right up or right I'm not allowed to go down so I can go right all the way and then up three so what are all the different and each of these little lines each of these little boxes is one move okay so what are my total moves that I can move up so how many different ways how I've got three up and how many ways how many uh, right movements can I make okay so in order to get from A to B what is the total number of moves that I need to make I have to move how many moves to get from A to B that doesn't change no, never mind. just no. just go eight. just just count it out eight. one eight. two three and then one two three four five eight. okay eight. so a total of eight moves okay how many different ways can I make that happen so eight factorial right now I need to kind of I need to get rid of all of the repetitions so what are all the repetitions well they're either three up or five right so then I can divide those repetitions out and then I've got well let's do this without a calculator so eight seven six five and then three uh, two that's the three factorial three times two times one I'm not gonna bother writing the one and then five factorial so this reduces out what is three factorial actually six so then I end up with eight times seven which is 56 different ways or paths to go from A to B cool all right okay so that's the end of this video next one we're going to do permutations with constraints so this one was permutations with repetitions which can get really confusing if you're not keeping track of things nicely